everyone and welcome to another meeting of the Eastern City Council. Um, today is March the 7th, 2022. The time is now 7.10 p.m. Before we get started, I'll ask that Pastor Olafon come forth and bring his prayer, please. I want to ask that you would bow your heads for a moment, please. Tonight, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity I thank you for an opportunity to stand in a place that I've never stood in before. I thank you tonight, God, that uh, you've brought us together. You've brought our leaders together. You've brought the community together. And we pray, God, that you would give us wisdom tonight to solve the problems of our city. We pray to God tonight that it, business would be done, not necessarily business as usual, but business that would bring resolve business that would be good for the people of this community. We ask these things and other blessings in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All rise. We pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. City Clerk, roll call, please. For the record, Mayor Weberly. Here. Mayor Parker Howard. Here. Council Member Williams. Here. Council Member Washington. Here. Council Member Walton. Council Member Present. Present. And Council Member Shaw. Mr. Chair. All right, moving right along. Approval of the agenda. Someone. Support. We move to properly support any discussion. Councilman um, Wally. Yes. Are, are we planning on changing it to request for RFPs as opposed to just sliding these people in or not moving it over we talked about that orientation. It would be a motion once it comes out to the business. Once it comes to business. Correct. Okay. All right. Mr. Chair, um, there was an item in closed session that does need to be added to the agenda, though. A motion. That's true. Well, the item B. Closed session item. Any other? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any nays? Aye. Ayes have a motion carries. Moving right into presentations. Um, just for the record, American International Academy will not be with us tonight, as you can see, but they will be with us in a future um, council meeting. Tonight, we're going to go right into our presentation from our attorney, David Jones. You have the floor, sir. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Good evening. Good evening. So, 
on the agenda tonight is a matter listed for presentation with regard to uh, myself, David Jones, as a city attorney, uh, continuing in that capacity at the law firm of Shank and Brooch. I've handed out a packet to each member of council, and I'm going to go through it on the screen today. Prior to tonight's meeting and the announcement that Allen Brothers is getting out of the municipal practice of law, there have been several conversations or questions about the nature in which Allen Brothers charges uh, the city for legal services. Uh, there have been a couple of requests that we expound or explain uh, how we charge, what we charge, and why we charge. So uh, I will address that and then move into the matter at hand with regard to Allen Brothers and Shank and Brooch. Many of council may know that I was sworn in as the city attorney on July 21st, 2011. Um, I had previously had some experience with the city of Inkster because I was retained by the city council to deal with the conflict between the judge of the 22nd district court and the council with regard to the money that was going back and forth uh, between the city. At the end of every month, the court was required and mandated by state to turn over money to the city. And at the time, the judge at the time, Sylvia James, was withholding the money, delaying the money, and the city attorney was not really investigating that matter on behalf of the city. Uh, so I was retained special counsel by the city council to look into that matter. And a short time after, I responded to an RFP on behalf uh, for legal services of the city of Inkster. So on July 21st, the late, latter part of 2011, I became the city attorney. At that time, it was also a concern that the city was paying exorbitant amounts of money in legal services. And if you look at this slide here, and I hope you can see it, I've you've given a packet, but hopefully the audience can see it. In 2008, the city of Inkster paid $462,000 in legal fees. And oftentimes we hear the comment that our prior city attorney never charged as much as Allen Brothers charges for legal fees. But at the time, what a lot of people don't know is that the prior city attorney never litigated one case on behalf of the city of Inkster. He attended city council meetings and he attended district court and he responded, he responded to emails and draft ordinance. All the litigation was done by outside counsel. In 2008, Seacrest Water litigated and received $260,000, a little more than $260,000 representing the city of Inkster. The other firm, Dyes & Associates, $31,000. Keller Toma, almost $7,000. Silverman & Morris, $24,000. Again, for a total of $460,000 plus. In 2009, Mr. Spokojny built himself without litigating any matter, not going to court and arguing on behalf of the city. One case charged the city $140,000. Gina Pozzoli, who he hired as outside counsel, earned $21,000. Seacrest Water on 2009, $240,000. And as you can see, there was another sm couple small other matters. Miller Canfield, $57,000 for almost $500,000 total in 2009. Likewise, in 2010, one, two, three, four, five, six, six other law firms worked for the city of Inkster, including Mr. Spokojny for over a half million dollars in legal fees. In 2011, we became city attorneys at the latter part of 2011. We made $21,000 that year. The legal fees added up to 200, almost $750,000 for 2011. So I did an average, and, and this document was prepared by Plant Moran, not, not David Jones, not Jim Allen, not my legal assistant. This was prepared by Plant Moran back in 2012 by Lynn Ellen, who was the accountant on staff for Plant Moran at that time. If you average 2008 to 2012, the amount of legal fees the city of Inkster paid for those four or five years came to over $570,000 a year. Now, council never saw those other bills from those other law firms. All they saw was Milt Spokojny's bills. So when I get the comparison and the criticism that Allen Brothers charges way more than our former city attorney ever charges, simply not true. We litigate 99% of every case that is filed against the city of Inkster. 
And all you have to do to prove that fact is go back and look at the invoices. So from the full year 2012 to last year 2021, you can see what Allen Brothers was paid for representing the city of Inkster litigating 99% of its cases. Now, there are a handful of cases where we had conflicts. Over the 10 years, I can mention three law firms I think we've hired to represent other matters. Uh, right now, someone is representing the officers in the Clark Harrington matter. But if you average out those years, between 2012 to 2021, the average is $324,000. That's still significantly lower than what they were for the years of my predecessor, almost 200,000, if not more, each year. And that's because the way we charge, and what we charge is a flat fee of $6,000. That happens no matter what. If we don't litigate anything, you will see a $6,000 bill on the invoice for, for city attorney's office. And that was to cover all of the prosecutions in the 21st, 22nd District Court, attending city council meetings, responding to emails, telephone calls. So there's been talk about, well, I don't like when I talk to David Jones, he charges me for that conversation. The only reason that shows up on a bill is to show you that it's being covered by our flat fee. And unlike the, my predecessor, you just got a bill. In, in the flat fee portion of our invoice every month, there are a list of items, and, and that attends department head meetings. And no matter what, if I talk to you an hour, two hours, or if I have 200 hours in that flat fee, it's only $6,000. This month, in our invoice, I will skip to this part. This was in our bill that, that came this month. And this was several pages, but I just printed the first page for your review, which shows the monthly amount of $6,000. And then I printed the last page. But there were about 20 pages to this portion of our monthly bill. You see, under the flat fee portion of our bill this month was 173 hours. And if you do the math, 6,000 divided by 173 hours, just the treasury, what is that going to? It's less than $40 an hour. Excuse me? $48 an hour. So in this most recent bill, the city of Angster got 170 hours worth of city attorney time. And it's not just me. It can be Harry Calagirakis. It could be John Nader. The mayor and the staff know that many things, drafting of ordinances, that's all done under our flat fee. An email to member Chisholm about, you know, GFL, a meeting with Jerome Bivens about GFL. All that is under flat fee. You will never see an hourly charge for our services under, under that section of our, our monthly bill. Now I did a five year litigation history of significant cases in the city of Angster. Now this is not meant to be complete, inclusive of every case we ever had, but these are notable cases. And the first four are notable because the city paid a lot of money for these cases. And the first one was filed in 2015, Ms. Brown, she suffered an injury in the city of Inkster on the sidewalk where her leg was almost broken in half. She had four surgeries. At the result of her final surgery, one leg was shorter than the other. She was with her grandson at the time. She was riding his bicycle in the city of Inkster. This case was arbitrated, which meant three, three lawyers uh, just listened to the facts of the case, looked at her medical history or medical records, and they put, it was binding arbitration. They put an award of $1.1 million on that case. And that's what she received. Now they were demanding $4.5 million. And that was paid by a judgment levy, <clears throat> excuse me, in August of 2019. 2017 case was a case filed by Stephen Abdullah against the city of Inkster and offer William Melendez. And this was on the, on the heels of the case where Office, former officer Melendez dragged Floyd Dent out of his car and beat him, and it was shown all over national TV. This incident with Abdella actually happened before the Floyd Dent case. But after the William, the Floyd Dent case and the Melendez hit the news, Stephen Abdella came forward, and that case settled for $300,000. They were asking for well over a million dollars. 
third case is significant because it's a six-figure amount is the Garner Properties class action lawsuit that was filed against property owners, uh, filed on behalf of property owners in the city of Inkster against the city as it related to inspections of property and McKenna, our building department. Uh, that case settled for $100,000 paid by Inkster and $30,000 paid by McKenna. And that came out of the building department, so it did not result in a judgment levy. Everybody remembers the 2019 case where the young lady that was 40 years old, uh, Miss Glagloa, and her son were killed by Officer Moore responding to a scene uh, with lights and siren on. That case settled for $6 million. Inkster's portion of our insurance was $1.95 million, which was paid by a judgment levy in 2000, February 2021. Serious cases with a lot of money on behalf of the city of Inkster. Other notable cases are a 2012 case that was litigated for over six years. And it was six years because we got the case dismissed. This is former Judge Sylvia James filed a lawsuit after she was removed from her job as the judge in Inkster. She claimed that they searched her office without her consent and it violated her, her civil rights. Uh, it was dismissed. She appealed. We responded, it was dismissed again. It went all the way up to the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals. It was finally dismissed for good in 2018. The James Salt Marshall case, you might remember, was the young man who was staying in a hotel with his three month old baby and he fell asleep, rolled over on her and killed, she died. Uh, the autopsy report indicated that there was some sexual misconduct on behalf of the baby. He was arrested and charged with criminal sexual conduct causing death, and it turned out that the medical examiner was wrong. But Inkster arrested him as a, based on the medical examiner's report and charged him. But as soon as we found out that the medical examiner was wrong, the prosecutor dismissed the case. He sued anyway. This case also made national TV. We filed a, 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 an answer to the case, defended, filed to dismiss it, got that case dismissed. Everybody knows the Romulus Community Schools case where they tried to tax the residents of Inkster for our children attending their schools. We got that case dismissed. It was finally dismissed by the Michigan Supreme Court uh, in January. Um, Sweet B 2018 case was dismissed. That case has since been sent back down to by the Court of Appeals for the Circuit Court to clarify her ruling in that case. The Shabazz case was dismissed. It was overturned on appeal. Lakani's former city engineer sued not once in federal court, but once we got that case, he sued again in state court. We got both of those cases dismissed. And then most recently, the Horn case was filed on behalf of some former employees of the city of Inkster who sued, claiming that Inkster did not have the right to change his health benefits. That case was dismissed in November of 2021. So, I illustrate those cases to say that despite some of the noise, we have worked very hard on behalf of the city of Inkster. Uh, we, we are proud of what we've accomplished. We haven't won every case, but we have won a significant amount of cases. And I am looking to continue as the city attorney on behalf of the city of Inkster uh, because I'm proud of the work we've done here. Now, there was also some concern about how much we charge. Member Chisholm asked, I want to know that we're not paying more than other lawyers and law firms in the city for what we do. There, there is a study done by the State Bar of Michigan, and it's titled the 2020 Economics of Law Practice. I provided this in your, in your packet. This is two years old. Nowhere in any of these categories that are broken down by county, by years of experience, by size of law firm, by location of law firm, nowhere in any of these highlighted figures will you see any lawyer or law firm, such as me or my law firm, charge $125 an hour. Not one. The 20th percentile of a non-equity partner charges $275 in Wayne County per hour. An associate gets $200 an hour in Wayne County. A senior associate, a regular associate, $190 an hour. It's broken down by the size of the law firm, the years of practice. I've been practicing law 25 years. 
I do work on behalf of the city of Inkster for $125. If you can, you can look on this page, someone of my tenure, 16 to 25 years, the 20th percentile out of 554 law firms polled gets $230 an hour. A lawyer only practicing six to 10 years in this vicinity gets $200 an hour. And it's broken down by if your office is in downtown Detroit, Flint, and you can look at this. I sent this to Member Chisholm two years, two, two weeks ago. In Flint, they get $200 an hour. Downtown Detroit, the 20th percentile is $218 an hour. Civil litigation, which is most of what we have here in Inkster, the 20th percentile is $225 an hour. Civil rights case, which we have one now filed against a police officer, is $225 an hour. In employment cases, $250 an hour in the 20th percentile. Labor employment, $200 an hour. So you can look at that and show that we're drastically underpaid. Finally, it comes to the letter that I give notice that Allen Brothers is relinquishing its practice of law completely uh, prior to the end of the year, the municipal practice immediately. And on the agenda for today is my letter that I sent to Mayor Wimberly last week. I think you, I emailed it to all of you on and I actually followed up with a call to talk to you if you had any questions about it. But I'm joining the law firm of Shank and Brooch. Matt Shank is the former executive of Wayne County under former county exec Robert Fricano. He worked for the county for about 20 years. He was most recently with the law firm of Ottenweiss, which is downtown Detroit for the last eight years. Tom Brooch was a partner at Bodman for the last 18 years. They took their municipal practice from Ottenweiss and started their own firm two years ago in downtown Detroit, not far from where I'm at now. Um, and the municipal lawyers from my firm are joining that firm, and it's my hope that council will see the benefit of having me as a city attorney for the last 10 years, uh, see the benefit of allowing me to continue doing what I've been doing, because it really is, despite some of the late meetings, it's a labor of love because we're not getting wealthy doing this work, um, um, but I'm vested in the city of Inkster. Um, member Wiley spoke previously about the contract. And the contract does say it's not transferable, but that's why we're here today with this resolution. Council can do what they choose to do with regard to our contract. Uh, I couldn't just start billing the city council and the city of Inkster under Shank and Bruce. I need formal ratification by this body. This body decides to do an RFP and go out for new attorneys, that's within their right as well. Um, and as member Wiley was concerned, I will continue on until and unless until if you find a new, you do an RFP and find someone else that's not my firm or me, um, I will continue on to help ease the transition. But I'm required of pursuant to the contract 60 days. Um, but, you know, it's my wish to continue on. And it's not required that you go out for a bid, but it's certainly within this body's prerogative. And I'll answer any questions if you have any. Go ahead, Councilman Williams. You still at $145 an hour? For the last 12, 10 years, sir. Then why would we go out for bid? Because, I mean, what lawyer are we going to bring in there under that amount? I mean, I mean, I'm just being true. You know, I mean, I mean, we all got it. We all can look up look up on what they charge us for hours and stuff like that. You know, when I look, when I look at this, I was just wondering. But see, I, I was thinking, never really looked into it. I was thinking you were charging 300 to 350 an hour. Okay, and two hours, and two hours went back and, and, and realized, you know, because I know what a, what a lawyer makes. I'm not, I'm, I don't know what they make. Okay, what they charge an hour and stuff like that. I, I deal with people every day. People that come to me for lawyers, criminal lawyers, cost even more than that, you know. So, and I don't, you know, I, I've been hearing them, and I was just wondering, because I, I kept hearing, I hear previous council people sitting here. And been here kept on saying they want to go out for RFP, you know, go out for our bids, you know. But when I look at this today, 
and seeing and, and seeing what we're paying per hour for rate. I, I, that's, if that's what you still charging. All I need to know is that's what you still charging us. One twenty five an hour. That's what we charge. Ain't nothing wrong. That's nothing to talk about. They can do what they want to do. I mean, because I, I know you ain't gonna find nobody cheaper than that. And that's just what I feel. I didn't say it my part, Mr. Matt. Thank you. Mr. All right, Chair? Mayor Pro Tem? Uh, yes. Um, how many of your uh, colleagues are, I know you may have mentioned it, are going on four? Going on four? And those four has been a part of Inkster. Yes. Uh, you've seen them. Uh, okay. Neil, Neil Piott, Lindsey Wagner, uh, Tara Kendrick, Harry Calajarakis is semi retiring but he's still going to be working with us. Okay, and Jim Allen is still, Jim would, Allen. would still do the labor if we keep the work. Okay. So, um, and myself. Okay. And Jim Allen would just do the labor part? Correct. That's all he ever does with Inkster in it anyway. Okay. Okay. Mutual. If we go out and look for new attorneys, and like you said, at the price that they're giving us, we can't go wrong. So that's all I have to say. And thank you for your services in this business. Thank, thank you, Protein. Yeah, I, I totally agree uh, with my colleagues. And I really appreciate you for <coughs> providing this. I know I asked for this maybe a week ago, and I went, went over this. And these numbers are from 2020. Now that it's 2022, I'm sure that the numbers have probably fluctuated and actually went up. So, um, with us being in litigation right now, you know the city the best, you know these cases the best. I personally, myself as well, would probably, you know, it's best for us to stick with the law firm that we know, the attorney that we know. So, thank you for doing the work that you have been going on with you that past couple of years. Thank you. That's all I have. All right. Yes, thank you. Um, just in regards to what Attorney Jones is saying, yes, we have had those conversations about the cost of comparison to, to other cities and things of that nature. And furthermore, um, even when it comes down to the consent agenda, it's time to pay them and I vote no. I've you know communicated the reason being is when we talked about the budget and we talked about budget amendments and just looking into it just to satisfy all minds to make sure that um, we were getting you know the best rate if there wasn't someone else out there, just like we did our RFP with GFL and other vendors, that's all I was asking for. But the treasurer at that time said no four council people either suggested that or, or conferred with it. So we moved forward and did business as usual. So it's like, well, if I can't get these documents and we're talking about a vendor and nobody wants to do you know that particular work, I can do it myself, but that's someone else's job, you know, to put it before us. Um, how would I continue to support that if no one will provide the information? So that all I was saying is they might have and be the best rates that are out there. And we still do RFP. We know we went through the process and everything like that and say, hey, that's what we have. But we do that with the rest of our vendors. And we were sitting up here talking about GFL and priority waste and waste management, so on and so forth. So um, thank you for the information. But I just wanted to further you know, speak to what had been said and why my decisions are the way that they are. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, you well, you. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I am interested in finding out because you said all of this <coughs> stuff comes under the six thousand dollar umbrella. I can go back through and show where emails have been sent to council people that they were charged for it. Okay. That would be if it's in relation to an open litigation. Well, that's all I'm asking. I want to know which ones don't cost me any money. Yeah. That's if it's related to an active litigation, it would be under that matter. If you if if I need to talk to you about a deposition that you're going to take in the Sweet B case, my preparation of your deposition in the Sweet B case is going to be charged per hour because it's in regard to litigation. But if it's a conversation about <coughs> a zoning matter, it's all under flat. You will never see an hourly charge for things that come under the flat fee category. Okay, well, I'm just saying I believe I have, but... Okay. Okay. I don't so, believe you um, have. So, your prerogative. And um, the other thing is, when you talked about the litigations where a settlement was made, I have, um, I have long heard that the Noreen Brown settlement was because she used the same doctor <coughs> in both sides of it. Mm -hmm. When she lost and then when she won, it was right. the same doctor. 
So I want to know once and for all if that's true, and if so, was there no uh, stipulation in the agreement when he first testified for the defense or the whatever? No, you may recall that that case, uh, it was filed. What year was it filed? Two thousand fifteen. You see, it, it wasn't finally resolved for four years. Remember, remember it went cold. That plaintiff's problems. attorney kind of disappeared. Right, and she we, disappeared. And then she came back, and all that. And stuff during like that, that time, she, according to her expert witness, and you're right, there was no stipulation. According to her expert witness, which became that doctor, she got worse and deteriorated. Right, but um, you said she wasn't bad initially. Correct, but. Okay. So, she disappeared for four years. It came back, and she had the the doctor who was previous expert, who was her. Okay, like I said, this is our big rumor, so I'm clear. That is true. That okay. is a correct statement. All right. So, you may be the lowest, but the lowest doesn't always indicate the best. I right? take no and, issue with that statement. Yeah. Okay. So here's my thing: is if we do our due diligence, we follow the rules. You may come out as the best person for the job. Absolutely. But if we don't do that, then once again, we're doing what everyone else does and just, we're not we're not doing our job, okay? Because who knows, there may be somebody out there lower or better or whatever. And Absolutely. who knows, we may find out David Jones was right all along. But this is the <laughs> opportunity to do he, it. He ain't, he ain't gonna come back with that same rate. Was I talking to him? But anyway, just give me the opportunity to do it. Don't take that away from me. That's my job. You know, we got 60 days. So uh, my other question was, how many additional attorneys do we have working for us at this time? Additional attorney firms. Because one of the things you said when you first came elect, when we first uh took Allen Brothers over as you were a full service department. Correct. You wouldn't have to go, we wouldn't have to go it's outside. It's right now, and that's the Clark Harrington matter, uh, because at some point, and they're representing the police officers, we represent the city. Mm -hmm. And the reason that's a conflict of interest is because at some point in time, if we find out that those two former officers did something wrong, you know, we very well couldn't represent them both. That's a, a natural conflict of interest. So just mm -hmm. one firm right now. Okay, so just one firm, outside firm, everything else we're doing is handled by Correct. Allen Brothers. Yes. Okay, well, because um, I have something for you, Mayor. I went through the uh, check roster, and I saw all the, you know, the legal things. So I want to send you, or if counsel wants to see it, a copy of that, because I, I ferreted out IT, legal, and insurance. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a lot of money, but... We, that's not important right now. It's just, I'm forward. old and I'm losing track. But anyway, like I said, I just think to follow the rules, we should go out for an RFP. Now, he may end up on top. That's his prerogative. But, or or that's how things turn out. But still, do your due diligence. That's, that's all I have. I have a question. <laughs> question comes from the question? Um, Question to what Councilman uh, Williams just stated. If we do go back out, out for RFP, is that a possibility when you come back that the rate can go back up? I will not bid the same rate. I'm, I may not even respond to the bid, to be quite honest. Um, and I, I will not bid the same rate. I mean, for 10 years, we have been making far below what a firm and lawyers of our caliber should make. Um, so no, I, I I won't bid the same rate. Right, okay, just need to know that. Any other comments, questions? Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Councilman Shaw. With that being said, I mean, we, we, we definitely have to consider, you know, something like that. So if we get ready to, uh, you know, go out for bid. We have 60 days to get this to get this done. 
So will they be willing to extend it for a little longer so that we can be able to solidify any RFQs that we need to do from that standpoint? Because I remember Mayor Pro Tem, when we had to do this before, it took us a long, it was a long process in venting out attorneys, whether or not, you know, they had the price that we wanted. Is it something that the council will be willing to do or even the attorney be willing to do? So then we can make sure that we can lock in, so to speak, this rate, because if we get three or four more attorneys to come in and respond to it, those those prices may not be the same. Oh, they not might, they won't be the same. So I'm asking my colleagues, will you be willing to do that? Yes, we do have to do the due diligence because the time is right now for us to go out for our RFQ to see what's out there. Regardless of if we have this printout before us, we still need to know. It would be shooting ourselves in the foot, so to speak. But how can we be able to still get the rates that we want because we understand what kind of fiduciary responsibility that we have as far as our finances is concerned. So can we can we somehow do that, Mr. Chair? If we can lock it in, maybe or extend it over the time. Yeah, I think the 60 days. I think you, this is the, the time for this discussion is going to come under the new business when we get to that point. And, and being able to talk through that. But at the same time, you have the attorney sitting here, he's gonna have to agree to it. Yeah, and, and, and also with, that's why I may mention it to him too, as well, because he, he he may, like you said, you may not go out for bid, you know, I mean, you might not come in for this bid that if we go out to, go out for bid. Well, I think after 10 years, we're entitled to a slight raise if we're gonna stay city attorneys. You may get someone who come in and bid the exact same, format that we've been doing it for the last 10 years. So, um, but on behalf of myself and the firm I'm going to, I won't come back with the same exact format because we simply exhaust too many resources for $48 an hour for a lot of this stuff. We can't sustain a quality level of practice doing that. Right now I'm tied to it and I will continue to service the city that way. But going forward, you, you may find someone else that's willing to do that. I don't know. No, I mean, because if you look at the study, I mean, you know, yeah. it's it's not, you know, and then we, and I, I think I heard my co colleague may mention about it's, it's two years old. So, you know, the rates could be even, even more as inflation. Goes. So no, we got to, we got to really, got to really deal with this thing. We got to really rock with this thing because we don't want to come out with the short end of the stick, where we still paying exorbable, so exorbitant rates in our attorney fees, and then the budget even goes even higher. So, Mr. Chair, how we, how you know, and I understand when we talk about it in the new business, but if a motion is made on the floor, then we have to, we have to vote on that, on that business. David, I wouldn't know. So it's, it's it's quite it's quite an interesting matter. Mm -hmm. so we definitely we definitely have the rate. I understand, and they, and you know that's the thing. Yeah, I, I don't think with the matter we know we know our budget and in a lot of litigation. Twenty twenty two. This twenty. That's twenty twenty. I mean, definitely is going to be more. Mm -hmm. Can we afford it? Or do we actually go with this person that actually have litigated our cases for the last 10 years? Or get someone that's going to probably charge the same amount as we provided, and now we pick that person, but they're not as good. So. Yeah, and I understand, I understand that, Mr. Chair. I understand that. But also, you know, we still have a responsibility as well to find out exactly what is out there because we still we still at that point we still don't know 
Now, it's a possibility that it can come in higher. It can come in lower. I think David Bain mentioned some can copy the same format. Now, I think the question would be, to me, the relationship that we have with Attorney Jones and the years that Attorney Jones has been here, that in itself, I think, will mm, pretty much outweigh a lot of the absorbable fees that we might get from other firms, just from my opinion, because I think the relationship is everything to me. So, you know, I just want to talk about this some more with my colleagues so we can really, really get what we need and not miss, miss the bus, so to speak. Go ahead, Councilman Weeks. You know, we've been talking about it going on for a long time, one, two years going out for RSP on, on the attorneys and things. Uh, we paying them too much. We paying them too much, you know. And the, the, the thing about it is, Okay, attorney fees, when people come in for lawyers, you know, they, they charge now. They, they, they up there just like anything else. But my thing is this. I could not believe it. I, I'm, I'm sitting here listening to you. You counsel people, holler about how high, we, how much money we paying out for the attorney. And when I when I looked back and came back, so I called a meeting. I wanted to, I, I, I asked some serious questions. How much are we actually paying you per hour? Okay. And I know what the rates are. And everybody sitting at this table know what the rates are in a, a big attorney fee and what they charge us. And when, I, and when he told me, he said, well, we charge $125 an hour. And so what I'm saying here, eventually if that's what you want to do, if you feel like you can find something better out there, see, I'm going to type like this. Before I sit there and say, I'm going to challenge you. I'm, I'm going to send out for the RSP to see what we get back. Okay, and then I gotta come back and come back and bow down to you and say, "Well, hey, man, uh, uh, I know it's not gonna be the same. I, I, I don't even ask that question. It's not gonna be the same. What I'm saying right now is, I mean, do your due diligence at the end of the case. Go out and talk to some of them, see what what the rates are. Go let's do some researching. We ain't got to go off on our ISP until we get ready to do that. You know that we got something better to come to the table. Okay." And we got a lot, and plus we got a lot of things right now that we need we need to be taken care of. Well, the attorney presented us with all that information from the state bar. I didn't hear you, Mr. Mayor. The attorney presented us with all that information from the state bar. We all had that information in front of us. Yeah. You know we use the lowest for sure. Right. <laughs> well, you know, I'm just I, I believe it. Okay. I didn't want everybody to believe it. All right, then. So we know we, we do have that under new business, but David, my question is this. When you took oath of office, it doesn't say Allen Brothers. It says David Jones. Why is that? Well, pursuant to the charter, a person has to be sworn in. Uh, the council and mayor appoint city attorney, you know, and that was me. So do we essentially have a contract with you or Allen Brothers? Well, the contract is signed on behalf of Allen Brothers. Um, I think I signed it. On mm -hmm. behalf of Allen Brothers, yeah. I signed it on behalf of Allen Brothers. But uh, until you get four votes to remove me, I'm the city attorney. Okay. So, so that's without a law firm, right? I think that understands what the mayor is getting at, because can you do business for Allen Brothers? Or for, you know, because our contract is with Allen Brothers. And uh, so it, you offering us this wouldn't... I mean, you're just a portion of Allen Brothers, right? Correct. Well, so, correct. So, uh, but Allen Brothers is going to cease to exist. Uh huh. Yes. But still, wouldn't wouldn't they, as the contract holder, have to send us that letter? I did. Well, you did. That, but yeah. it's on him. You sent us the letter, but because it's on Allen Brothers' letterhead, it stands in place of. Another thing is it says here in your uh, in the contract I have here in exchange for and consideration of a reduced annual retainer amount of seventy two thousand dollars the law firm through David W Jones or his designee will be the exclusive provider of the following city services then it lists all those things that you're supposed to do for so the money and stuff like that. So I guess I'm, uh, 
this is $72,000. I guess that averages out to the flat rate, right? And that's what's included. $6,000 a month. Yeah, okay. So whatever you make outside of that is for... Litigation and labor. Litigation and labor. Okay. All right. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah, Mr. Chair, I mean, I, I just want to see if if they're, if they're here for 60 days, if we can get that done within the prior 60 days, because they're going to be here for 60 days if they are not approved or signed over, then can we get that done as far as RFQ, all of the process within that 60 days? Because this is this is appointed by the councilmatic body, right? So then you'll have to have, of course, you know, we only meet twice a month. You have special meetings. You have to put so it out what, for a certain amount of time. And that's what that's what I'm saying. It's 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 a it's a process. It's a long process. Well, can the clerk advise us on the length of the process? Do you right. have that information? Would you have that information out, per chart? Because we put out RFPs before for different things. So is there a process or a time frame that it, you know, like you have to post it for two weeks or this, that, and the other, blah, 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 blah. Or do we just put it on in the... Well, for this position, I wouldn't recommend that. Um, we're talking about our legal services for this body and selects that. You can go out and do the RFPs and do a basic two week and then review them. But I think the process will go on well beyond 60 days just because of the nature of the work I think, that we're asking for. I think I'm gonna, I think I can pull up the last RFP we put out for legal services and see if something needs to be tweaked where that's concerned. But well, I'm, um, I'm not saying that building an RFP is a problem. I'm just saying the sensitivity and the nature of what we're doing right now and the litigation that we are still involved in, it would take a while to make this change if we chose, if this body now we but this body changed, changed um, city attorney. But we're not, no one is saying they want to change. They just want to see what's out there. And that's, that's like hiring anybody. If you're going to hire a, a whatever, you want to see that you get whoever. I mean, there may be somebody out there. They may not be. But why are you holding yourself off to finding out? That's, I'm not suggesting that. I'm just saying I no, think I'm, it would that's be my a long process. That's my statement. You know, and anything worth do worth having is worth spending the time on. So, uh, and we can count on David's. What did he say? This is a labor of love for him to hang around, right? No. <laughs> well, business is business at the end of the day. <laughs> Go ahead, Mayor Proton. Um, before we do all of that. Council has never sat down and asked what, which, what was you guys each individual goals or what you expect of an attorney. So how can we go out for an RMP and we never sat down as a council as a whole? What are you guys' expectations? And we haven't done that. So how can we go out for an RMP and I don't even know what everybody wants or what you're looking for? Right. I think. That's, that's the number one thing that you should say. Yes, if we go off for, for B, but we never sit down as a council to decide if that's something that we wanted to do other than certain people talking, but we never sat down as an individual to say, hey, what are our expectations? That's right. We never sat down for, as the clerk to sit down, what is our expectations? before we go out for an RFT. But, and once again, I'm only one vote, but all the litigation that we got going on right now, 
He ain't gonna get nobody. I mean, I'm not saying we might, we may not. But the the transfer attorneys, and we got some very important cases out there. That's crazy to me. But I think you putting yourselves out there before we even sat down there and talked. And now, and in 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 tonight, tonight's action is to consider approval resolution. It's not to consider an RFP to go out for us. So we have to add another on the agenda for this. That's not what this action item is. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem, because that was definitely my point. That's not what this action what item is. Saying, is. I mean, that was, that, was, that, was, that was my point. I mean, of course, I want to, you know, of course, all you guys, of course, had a right to speak as it relates to what David is presenting to us. However, the action item is listed as it is. So you, unless you want to amend it when it comes to that time, then we need to move on. Right. All right, David. Thank you. Appreciate it. And thank you for the service, man. You thank do an excellent job. You know, I know I work with you. I think I was here when we hired you, so I, I get it. I, I, I get it here, too. I, I know we should actually, you know, of course, see, when we went out, and I'm really glad you illustrated that, because I forgot all about that, that we were paying an exorbitant amount yeah. of legal fees during that time. And that's why we went out. So we should definitely have calls to go out. And then, of course, do our due diligence overall as it relates to just the service overall. Now, if the service is being impacted, the quality of service not being delivered, then I understand that. But if it's not, you know, or however, we have some type of rubric to say that. And I, I agree with Mayor Pro Tem. We should do something like that first and then, and then go from there. But anyway, that was just my statement to that. Let's move right along. It's an agenda. So move, Mr. Chair. Support? Support. Moved and properly supported. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any nays? Nay. Nay. Give me a roll call on that, please, City Clerk. <clears throat> Council Member Washington. So approved, yes. Council Member Watley. No. Council Member Chisholm. No. Council Member Shaw. Yes. Council Member Williams. Yes. And Mayor Pro Tem Howard. Yes. So that's a five. Four two motion carries. All right, moving into boards and commissions. You're welcome. Mr. Mayor. Please, Mayor Pro Tem Howard. Um, I would like to reappoint June Patterson for the aging um, commission. Is there a second? Right. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any nays? I just have a motion carries. Mr. Mayor. Please. I'd like to appoint Ray Brown to the uh, Recreation Commission. <clears throat> Is there support? Support. Let me see. It's what uh, is that a district or what are we what are we doing? We want to make sure that we're placing people correctly. Is that a district that he would be representing? He was just being a, a I mean, parks and I, 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 didn't, I didn't know they were all went to districts. Now he's yeah. from um, you know just uh, vacancy fully. Yeah, that's five, yeah, no, each person, each one has each one of us have appointments. So you have one through six. Yes, ma'am. What's that? The council one. Okay, the council one. Okay. Let's make the point of clarification. That's what I wanted to hear. Is that the council one? Mm -hmm. Is that the council for the council designee? My recommendation. Right. We, have, a we have so many we have appointments. All of us have appointments. You have districts one through six and two mayoral and one council. Yeah. Okay. Are you getting support for that? Support. Support. Do you support? Okay. okay, just for discussion on that. So if you look at your boards and commissions, mm -hmm. by the bylaws, each district is represented. So you one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then you have two mayoral appointments. And then you have a councilmatic body appointment. 
Okay, okay, then I can just heal to uh, ask. Um, support our protest. Right. What, what vacancy she got there? Well, no, she council is fine. The council, the council, you already made a motion on that. Yeah. At the bottom, at the bottom, yeah. the 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 council. bottom it's got it's a council, council as a whole. Point. It's a council. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It'll be right. the council to finish out that term, actually, right? Okay. Okay. I didn't want to. I didn't want to remove it until I had. Well, no, no, you're not okay. removing anyone. That's okay. a it's a vacancy there. All right. All right. Any other discussion? Yes, I will also have an appointment as well. Uh, any other discussion as it relates to this yes. appointment? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any nay? <clears throat> Ayes have a motion carries. Okay. Um, I would like to appoint Irish Long to Agent Commission. Are we to start? Okay. Now I know that just so we're all on the same page here. Yeah, there was some confusion at last. Are week. we are are so we'll be we'll be okay, Madam Clerk, with that appointment as it relates to how many members are supposed to be there? Nine members. Calm down. Ten, <coughs> eight, and we just reappointed June Patterson as nine. Irish Long, it looks like her term expired, it like there were two expired terms on there. Um, right. Yes, yeah, supposed to be Denise Champagne, and Irish Long would like to continue, so that's why I'm reporting for you. What, what position? Commission. Um, commission yeah. on Aging Commission. Commission to Aging. Yep. Yeah. All right, look like you have 12 appointments here. <laughs> yes, two expired. We just read. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have ten appointed, two expired, one reappointed, makes eleven. Yeah, so both Irish Long and June Patterson. Sorry, ma'am. Was there really twelve always on here when we supposed to always have nine? That's what it looks like. Look like actually it was ten. And then you added Ruth Williams and Deatrice Richardson. That's what it looks like here to me. Yeah, that's kind of what we were talking about at our last council meeting. Also with Tim Williams, it looks like. So yeah, I'm let's 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 move it along. I'm okay with that. I did talk with Denise and we just need to they just gonna redo their bylaws if that's the case. And then and, and move that forward because we want to keep our seniors active and want to be active. And I know that June Patterson and Irish Long both are very active and want to continue. Um, and they did uh, submit that in writing to the Commission on Aging, but the meeting was canceled before they could come back before the councilmatic body with the appointment. So we want to make sure that we move that forward and then we'll work with them to make sure we tighten that up. Okay. All right, then all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Nays. I just have a motion carries. Any others? I'm looking for appointments to the beautification committee uh, from this body. I think that every council person should be represented on the beautification committee, understanding how important the beautification committee is to the entire city. Um, in order for us to have a clean, safe, accessible Easter, all of us need to be working in conjunction with one another. So I'm asking for each council member to um, give, me, give me somebody from your district. They can represent and actually sit and be a part of uh, the conversations working with uh, Gabe Henderson. Gabe is actually taking up the mantle for, um, for 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 Tony, and we know that Tony's memory is going to continue to live on. We're going to do it in her in her honor, and of course, the honor of our city to continue to to instill pride into our community. However, I need for each one of you to seriously think about who's going to be involved in at those meetings, because I know Gabe gets to work, and I'm going to be working with him. So we want to make sure. We have people surrounding that's going to be able to pick that up. And we have right now one, two, three, four, five vacancies. Okay? So I hope that you guys, because we, we're, we're starting, Mr. Bivens, when, when, when are we supposed to be starting our spring clean? Next month. Next month. Okay. we got a little time to get together. It looks like we have a meeting coming up soon. Monday, Monday beautification. Yeah, next Monday at 6. All right, good then.
Anybody want to volunteer too? I'm taking notes too. All right, then. Anybody else? Also, too, the Downtown Development Authority. I'm working with Wayne County to uh, bring some money into our uh, community. I'm working with the Planning Commission and, of course, um, working with the Economic Development Department here in the City of Inks. Our Downtown Development Authority, we need to make sure that it's, number one, that it's the body is correct. I'll send you guys all the information if you haven't received it from the attorney, also too from our planner, also too from our clerk in relation to how the body should actually look. The DDA should be represented by people that uh, have interest in the DDA and then by one resident that lives within the DDA. So we want to make sure that when we're appointing people to these bodies that we're getting, that we're doing it properly. We're not just putting people in place just to be in place. The Downtown Development Authority is very important to our Main Street initiative, looking at the uh, corridor at East Road, Michigan Avenue, that is our synergy where our downtown is. It's always been that way. And um, we have some opportunities through ARPA, also too with re uh, redevelopment ready communities, to be able to get some money from the federal government and also too from the state. But we have to be, we have to be active with being ready. So I'm looking for appointments for DDA, but again, their interests have to be in the DDA and one member that actually has to reside in the DDA. And I'm looking at this composition now, the folks that's actually on the DDA, and I don't think this is correct. But I will be working closely with the city attorney along with the planner before we get back around. Hopefully, uh, by April's first, the first of April's meeting, to make sure that we address that properly. So, Mr. Chair, please, Council. Now, you, you want business owners in I mean, it should be. It, it, I mean, I remember some years ago. That's how it. That's how it was. You yeah, know, business owners was per per, per per the bylaws and per the DDA. So formerly uh, from the state of Michigan, that's how it should be. So so is can we work in conjunction with the? Is your mic on, sir? I don't. I don't know. It's, yeah, so it's green. Okay, go ahead. Can we work with the Inkster Chamber of Commerce to be yeah. able to uh, bring some DDA? Business yeah. owners. Yeah, they're working with me right now. Mark okay. Tice is actually on the board already. Okay. Um, and then it's a couple more individuals that I know have interest in the DDA. But um, again, we need to make sure that as we're appointing people and ask people to serve, that they're bringing something to the table. We just don't want to appoint people just to hold the spot, you know, and then we're figuring it out as we go along. We need, we have a lot of talented people within our community that want to get involved. They just need to know what they're doing. Okay. All right. Mr. Mayor, go ahead, please. You go on. That yes, was going to be one of my um, under my comments. I was going to ask because uh, those books that we get from MML, mm -hmm. and you look at other communities, they DDAs know how to write grants. They bringing in money up north, mm -hmm. and I was just that, that was one of my comments tonight. Is when can we get our DDA up and running? Yeah, and I'm not saying that they're not running. No, I just think that again. They haven't had any meetings, have they? I think they've had some meetings, um, but I don't know if they've had one recently for the new year. Okay. Yet. okay. But I know that they've had meetings in the past. And, and, and again, um, just looking at, again, how the people are on the board, if they should even be on the board, serving on the board, right. really, to be honest. Okay. You know, I'm just looking at some of the names that's on the DDA. Um, do they have, number one, do they have a business in the DDA? Or do they live within the DDA? Okay. And how the composition of the DDA should be, you should have an actual interest in that area. Almost like the TIFA. Correct. Just so, like the TIFA. So now, my next question would be, is there a way maybe we can contact MML to see whether or not, um, if they offer grant classes, mm -hmm. grant writing classes, so when we do put these people on the board, mm -hmm. they, they can, like you said, they can do something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. We're we're actually in, in, in contact with MML and CCW. Okay. CCW is the conference of, uh, of Western Wayne as it relates to the mayors and, and working with uh, the, the body to make sure that we're connected with all the information that we need right. for all the right. people to help every board and commission in the city. Okay. So definitely, we're definitely going to present that to them. Okay. And then, um, also, too, our, uh, working with McKenna and Associates, um, making sure that they're at those meetings helping them through the process 
and you know, just really just training our people as we go along, getting them the tools they need for it to be successful. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome, ma'am. Anything else? All right, moving right along. No previous business. For three is none, second is none. New business. City Clerk. So new business. Letter A is to consider approval to retain David Jones, Esquire, as the city attorney, assign and assign the Inkster related files to David Jones, city attorney, to continue working seamlessly on matters at Jake and and Rooch, SMB law firm until this body comes to an end. Does that say that there? It doesn't say that there. That's not in the resolution. On matters S and B law firm. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure that we, we, we what's in front of us is what's in front of us. Not anything additional unless this body needs to add that. Right now, you have the matter before you. What's your motion? Is there a motion? So moved. Is there support? Been moved and properly supported. Discussion? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Please go ahead. Come All on. right. So I may have misspoke earlier. So I just want to get clarity on this document today. It's just to stay with Attorney Jones and go over to the new law firm on a month to month basis, correct? Like we are right now. Well, David, is that what? That's correct. We're on a month to month. Okay. I've been with for the last several years. Gotcha. And then whatever we decide going forward, we had that right to make the choice then. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. That's, that's, thank you. And that's at any given time with the contract, correct, correct David? Correct. Right. Yeah, I mean, we would just, oh. Okay. Remember, we, good, good, good point, Councilman Chisholm. All right, then. Anybody else? Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's what, you know, I was alluding to when we was given to the presentation that my next thing would have been if, you know, once this, if this goes through, then we can then decide to go off, go off for RFP if if we so decide. So that was my. Yeah, and I think that 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 gives more clarification to it all. David will continue to do the work. He's just working with another law firm, and I'm going to tell you, right off, no slight to uh, Jim Allen and the Allen Brothers law firm, but Shake and Bruce and what they're offering, uh, Bruce and what they're offering, is going to take Inkster to another level as it relates to just. Um, the municipal experience overall from the partners. I think it's going to really do us justice and be a good fit. Plus, there's some other stuff coming down the pipe, so I'm really excited about that. Yeah, so, you know. So, yeah, so the mo anything else as it relates to this, as it relates to discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any nays? Aye. Ayes have it. Motion carries. All right, you have an item B. Item B is a matter regarding Suite B that was discussed in closed session, and the motion is to grant city attorney authority to extend offer to settle case. What's your pleasure? So moved. Move. Support. Move. Move. Moved and properly supported. Do you need a roll call on that, or it's all in favor? Yeah. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any nays? Ayes have it. Motion carries. All right, getting right into public comment. Good evening, everyone. And hopefully, um, if you would like to address this body, you should be filling out a comment card. It's located on the side here. Turn it into the city clerk. And you have one minute to address this body. The city clerk, I know it came up last meeting as it relates to just the time a person is allowed. So please, if I call a person and they get up to the podium and say their name, speak your name for the record clearly, please. And Octavia Smith. Good evening, Mayor, Council, residents. Um, first of all, I'm glad to be back at another City Council meeting, I missed you guys. Glad to see you. My one minute is moving. So I just wanted to bring you greetings from the Inkster Chamber of Commerce, the Inkster Task Force, always including the Western Wayne Family Health Center. Letting you know that the Inkster Task Force, the Inkster Chamber of Commerce, will be doing a collaborating um, outing this year. We're gonna um, have our first collaborating golf outing 
on August the 5th. So I'm going to ask you guys to save the date so that you all can um, come and participate, network with um, the Inkster businesses and their um, residents and the you know surrounding community. With the Inkster Task Force, um, we did complete a one year of the Inkster Task Force Farmer Market last year. Where we've gone to our second year this year, um, starting May the 4th through October the 5th, every Wednesday at 27020 Michigan Avenue. Um, so we're again hoping to see you guys coming out and supporting the Eastern uh, Inkster Task Force Farmers Market. This is for the community. So we want to make sure the community get involved. This year, we will be having the Eastern Market from the city of Detroit will be coming every Wednesday to hum, come and support and bring vegetables so that you, we all can have some fresh vegetables in our city. So please think about um, coming out. When are the task force meetings? The task force, force meets every fourth Thursday at 12 o'clock. Right now, it's still virtual. And I, you are on our, you are on our mailing list, so. You guys had a meeting today or was it virtual? No. We did have a conference. It was like a conference. Oh, okay. So that wasn't like a meeting. It was a collaborating meeting just to, and we did send that information out. And for folks who did want to attend who couldn't come in person, mm -hmm. we did give a Zoom link. Okay. And those folks who did yeah, get the Zoom link. send that information to us. I mean, yes. I'm assuming that someone from the city should be a part of the Should. And, and I do. I, I, most of you guys are on the mailing list, and you all receive I'm, I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm not, I'm not, and my executive is not either, so I'm going to make sure that we get on there. Okay, I'm not going to argue with you. Yeah, fourth Thursday. <laughs> fourth Thursday at 12 o'clock. Um, don't forget the Western Wayne Family Health Center. We do offer COVID testings on Tuesdays from 9 to 12. On Friday, um, we do vaccinations from 9 to 12, and on Friday and Saturday, we do vaccines and testing. So again, Western Wayne is there to assist our community and the surrounding community because people come from Genesee County, Oakland County, just everywhere to take up health care at Western Wayne Family Health Center. We do have four locations, Inkster, Taylor, Lincoln Park, and Dearborn. So um, just know that you have these things right here in our neighborhood. So please stop by and support what we have that is ours. Again, it's so glad. I'm so good to see everybody. Thank you all for this. It's every it's going to Wednesdays starting May the fourth, mm -hmm. and it's going to be at two seven zero two zero Michigan Avenue, mm -hmm. just as we had in the past. What time? What's the time? Four to seven p.m. Four to seven. We try to do it after hours so that you know people won't have to say we well, you know, we at work or whatever. But even though people work afternoons as well, but we want to make sure that everything is available. And we're always looking for vendors, um, knowing that vendors, uh, we don't try to do two of the same type of vendor. Like if we're having a candle maker, we don't want two candle makers we, so that everybody can get an opportunity to um, sell what they have. And we do use our community gardens for the vegetables that we grow as well. Um, I'm not sure if you guys know, but we rise um, who do and grow all of their vegetables. They come and sell jarred vegetables, pickles, and things like that that they grow out of their gardens. So please do, again, support our city because this is for all of us, not just one. Yes, ma'am? you have that information again for the Boston? Yes. Friday, August the 5th <coughs> at Inkster Valley Golf Course, one of the beautifulest golf courses in the United States of America. Please come and support us. <laughs> Any more questions, anyone? Yeah, I would just like to have a task force come before the body, give us a presentation of basically what you're doing, what your, you know, what your outlook is as it relates to the city and all that stuff. Sure, absolutely. And that's basically what the meeting was today about, um, just doing some strategic planning and trying to um, see what we really, what the goal, the full goal is. And I see that Pastor Jean Overman is in. Um, she's more of a speaker than I. So if she wants to come up and collaborate or, or share some of her thoughts, that would be awesome because she, you know. We can do that at another time, but I want to actually make it formal. So you okay. guys come on and kind of do a presentation sure. like David did today. Thank okay. you. Any right. more questions? Thank you so much. I Thank you. That. Paul Longwell, Longway? I'm sorry, Paul. Good, please just state your name for the record, please. Paul Longway. All right, sorry about that. That's okay, most people say Longway, so I roll with it. Okay, gotcha. 
I'm here because of getting very little action from the city. My mom was attacked by the dog next door, a pet bull. She was mauled pretty bad because she decided she wanted to be neighborly and take a letter to the front door, which the mailman brought to her house by mistake. She suffered great wounds, had to go through hours of surgery. I've called the mayor at the time, left messages with you. I've left messages with the police chief. I've even talked with the city prosecutor basically on this a little bit. Everything was ignored until I spoke with Ms. Howard. She got things rolling. I apologize for the rude text and stuff like that. You gotta understand the stressful situation. Uh, things between me and the neighbor have gotten so bad that I have had to buy a body cam because of the threats, her actions. I have been recently threatened by the Inkster Police Department, two officers, to be thrown out of my home, have my mother thrown out of her home because of the actions of this woman next door. I have that on body cam. On another police report, an officer decided that he wanted to blame me for something somebody else done. Named me as a suspect. Lied in the report. I have evidence of all of this too. We're sick and tired of this. Things need to be done. These things just aren't stopping. I don't know how much more. I even tried getting a PPO against the woman. The court denied it because of lack of evidence, because I can't get police reports filed because I'm afraid to call the police to have them come out and file reports because I've been threatened. I have the uh, information if the city council wants it, that I've been dealing with the uh, PPO advocate out of the second precinct. Uh, the PPO court wants charges pressed against this woman. I have gave a packet to everyone here. It's a pretty thick packet. I've been open and honest with everything, with things that may come, go against me, but most of them are lies. There is one court case, which I did this under a FOIA. There's one court case in here that went against me. It's not in here. I was supposed to get it today, but I was so busy trying to correlate all this stuff, I didn't have time to get it. I will get it and I will send it to you, each and every one of you. All right, Paul, thank you. Take responsibility for my action. Three minute mark. Okay, sorry. No, you're, you're fine. I know that minute go by fast, but we did more. And I've got pictures more if anybody wants to see them. Yeah, we do have that information. All right, okay. thank, you. thank you. And I do not want to mess up. Your name is it Arlene? Arlena? Can I answer? Yes. That's my son. Okay, would you like to come forward and speak, ma'am? Do you have a. Go ahead. My name's Arlene Dancy. I live next door to this woman that he's affiliating, talking about. I did go to give her her mail. I knocked on the door. She didn't close porch. The inside door was open. I stood on the steps. The dog came to the door. He pushed the door open. I have a video. He tore up my arm. My, my son had to straddle that dog to get that dog off of me. I want that dog gone. I want her gone. She lives right next door. I can't go out my side door without having to look for that dog to see where he is, what he's doing. The other day he got out and he ran down the street. I take my dog out on a leash. He's out in a crate in the backyard and he's going crazy. I can't deal with this dog. I have a chunk taken out of here. I have a metal brace in here. My fingers don't work. $5,000 in medical bills. This has got to stop with her. That's all I gotta say. We're done. All right, Gabe Henderson. <clears throat> Our part of my day job is getting up. But once I get up, I'm alright. Okay. Uh, good evening, family. Good evening. Okay. Uh, I want to talk about a few things. Uh, mainly, okay, we rise program together. You know, at school program. Uh, um, I talked with you about that before. Uh, we meet Mondays and Wednesday from 3.30 to 7.30, sometime we go late. Uh, now, Wednesday, we're going to be at the library. 
me and Hicks Library. So it's uh, going to be out in, you know, get the kids uh, familiar with the library and all what it has to offer. Okay. And I'm just thinking, you know, of course, I work with beautification. I'm thinking about maybe trying to combine the, the, the youngsters and see if they could work with us in some way. We'll, we'll probably work on time because, uh, and like to say, they they are, uh, you know, at the Spring Hill Baptist Church, you know, they had that garden for, you know, we ride program right there and back to church. Okay, Mayor, Sir. you know, uh, we're both sitting all there, we know we don't have a lot of money. But one thing, you know, I talked to you about is trying to get an official letter, official letter, mm -hmm. okay, and uh, that, we, that I can take. I talked with the guy at the Home Depot, and I told him, you know, where you at now, it used to be Inkster. <laughs> Well, I don't have too much to do with, you know. But, uh, and, you, and I, I hope he would have an interest in trying to help us along. Uh -huh. uh, not asking for a whole lot, you know, because sometimes they have damaged products uh, and goods and so forth that we probably utilize with the after school program and also with the beautification program. Uh, I've, uh, I wish you could come and see what we have done with stuff. <laughs> That I found, we, we we just got finished building this beautiful workbench. We got uh, we got two wood vices on. We got a metal vice. We're gonna put two uh, minor boxes and all that. And because them, them young them youngsters, they want to work. And well, before we had you know, try to let them work in one little small portable. But but now I, they, they they can work out. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna have some nice projects going and all that. So like I said, Mayor. So tomorrow or the next day, could I get that letter? Yeah, for yeah. sure. And yeah. uh, I, they, come up tomorrow. And we'll drive tomorrow, it tomorrow, right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, what else we want to say? So uh, they they are are a tr true jewels that I, uh, that we have in our city, and uh, we got to help them and support them. And like I say, they, we're gonna be at the library at five o'clock tomorrow. If y'all want to come up there, you know, and maybe chat with a couple or a few of them and all that, so that'd Tuesday be fine. Tuesday or Wednesday? I beg your pardon. When is that? You're at the library? Oh, tomorrow. 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 tomorrow Tuesday. Wednesday. Well, wait a minute. Wednesday. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Wednesday, because we, we, that's where we meet. Wednesday, you know? what time? Yeah, uh, 5 o'clock. Right, 5 o'clock. We'll be there at 5. 5 o'clock. All right. Yeah. And, uh, and if you can come by, you know, the uh, Malcolm X, well, it's Floyd B. Simmons and all that, but, and come and see what, they, you know, progress. They saw and they be, you know, well, they, okay, here, they sewing machines was damaged. Had a little one of the overhead sprinklers damaged the sewing room and all that. So that's better. Oh, oh till we can get that corrected. They okay. still cooking. They still doing their dance program. They doing a you know uh, the carpentry program and all that. Man above two thousand years ago, if he was on there, he could see that they're making progress and he's looking upon us today. You know who I'm talking about. He was a great carpenter, mm -hmm. the best. So, uh, <laughs> so I want the sport. The sport. I want that letter. Yes, sir. And I, it ain't too much I can say. And but I'm gonna have to talk to a few. You said a lot. I beg your pardon. You said a lot. Yeah, yeah. And we, we used to have two minutes, didn't we? Uh, you're up to about four. No, right but now. did we used to have two minutes? We had three. We oh, we had three. Why we cut it down to one? Uh, because of the virtual. When we went to virtual, then now we just got to. The councilmatic body just ruled to do three again. Oh, three again. But, but I've been oh, oh, we're going to go back to three. I've been as a chair where it's Oh, okay, that's good. Three. Right yeah, okay. Yeah. You, know, that's, you know, that's good. He'll turn around that time for him. <laughs> three. So we're going to have three. See for himself. Yeah, because, okay. Yeah, you're, okay. you're 537. I, I appreciate right? letting y'all, you know, fa you know, we yeah. number family. I know who you are, and I, I appreciate know. what you're doing. You know, doing. you're just a part of that, oh, what, 7.8 billion sisters and brothers, you hey, know. Listen, we're just a part all of it. we got to love one another, help one another. It's all love, for sure. Okay. Thank you so much. All right, all right, Kimberly Faison. I heard recent remarks by Councilwoman Watley liking the administration to dictators Genghis Khan, Attila Hun, Adolf Hitler, Idi Amin, and Donald Trump. Not only are most of these people mass murderers, but they've committed genocide. I am calling upon you all to reset the culture of this body and also to publicly denounce these remarks. Our community has to deal with structural racism and bias. And inside, we have to deal with all kinds of socioeconomic issues and our people have been traumatized and enough is enough. This body 
needs to be able to work together, resolve your differences as respectfully as possible. And certain things just need to happen behind closed doors. Not everything needs to be public like that. If we wanna be able to attract and retain residents, businesses, investments, to be able to work with policymakers, if we wanna have any kind of future, it has to be united. So I really am compelling you to again, denounce those statements and reset the culture. Otherwise you are complicit with her behavior. Good evening. Good, evening. good to see everyone. Glad to be back in person. And I really clapped for a reason because we have to set the tone. And as we move today, I'm thankful that you all got another opportunity. I heard him this morning at seven. As I was looking at Jewel on CBS, Zaman was on there, talking about the great work they're doing, being recognized. I have not heard from us about the great work that they do. I haven't heard about the great things that happen day in and day out. I need our body to step up on behalf of Inkster. No one should be able to say anything about us like that, and we sit silently. There was a time when we were hung from trees. And you want to know what the worst part was? The people that said nothing. It is our birthright to speak on behalf of things that are incorrect. Not only was that incorrect, but I'm on a commission with her. I watched a young man say hello four times, and I watched her respond with nothing. That has to stop, Sandra. It has to stop. No one should accept that kind of abuse. We owe it to one another to not only hold people accountable, but to make and do the right thing. So again, I have a million announcements about the work we're doing, the things that's happening, but I can't sit silently, not as a person in the city of Inkster that have been here my entire life, working and supporting and working and supporting our city. I need support from our council where you move in strength. And that doesn't mean you have to agree with everything. She has the right, everyone has the right to hold people accountable. Where you cross the line is when you're disrespectful. If you're a leader. And if we don't understand that, there's lots of training available for everyone. They do it all day. Dale Carnegie made zillions of dollars doing that. You don't know how to talk to people? Get trained, but what you cannot do is think it's okay to say that. Not an inkster. Thank you. All right, moving right along. City Clerk, do you have anything for us? I do not. All right, Treasurer, do you have anything for us? No, sir. All right, Mayor and Council. Let's start. Councilman Chisholm? Nothing at this time. Councilman Shaw? Yes, yes, Mr. Chair, I do. Thanks. I just want to encourage everyone to, if you see something, uh, say something. And also, Mr. Chair, I have a concern over on Inkster Road, 1056 Inkster Road. I think it's some graffiti on the building there. Yeah, we, and, we should be taking off this week. Okay. I'm working on it right now. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. uh, now, we, we talked about the trash cans being left out. Uh, last council meeting. Now, is that going to be up to code enforcement <laughs> to handle, or is that the building department? Because I'm getting some of my members talking about they got information about it was the building's department. They had to go to the building's department to talk about it, or they're going to enforce it, or is code enforcement going to enforce the cans? Yeah, it's code enforcement, period. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's the code. So yeah. Yeah, so I, I I definitely want to make sure exterior, so building yeah. and yeah. I well I, I just want to make sure it's it's crystal clear because yes, it was it was confusing to my member that you know she was told that it was the building department. Mm -hmm. And I, I Code told enforcement works in the building department. So that's probably what it opened. Okay, so but they will send letters because mm -hmm. and, and also the reason why I say this, Mr. Chair, is that uh letters were, or addresses were sent to code enforcement because we have chronicle 
uh, people just just leave the kids out constantly. Right. You know, I mean, just they they just I mean, it's like a, it's like a, I mean, not trying to beat up on anyone, but it's like an epidemic. I mean, they just they they just do it. So we gave out, you know, I told my members, you know, get addresses and what have you, mm -hmm. monitor it, what have you for a couple weeks to see, because sometimes people can be out of town. Sometimes people can be sick or what have you. So just monitor. So we gave this about maybe about a month ago and it's still the same way. So. They want to understand, you know, is it the code or is it the building? So yeah. I just want to make it clear publicly that it is the responsibility right. of the code, code enforcement. enforcement. But let me just say this, because of the ordinance and how it reads, you have to give notice. So what we've been doing is knocking on doors where we can. And then, of course, following up in writing and yeah. give them yeah. 72 hours to comply. And after that, if they don't remove it, you give them a ticket. Yeah. And that's reasonable. They can redo that. Yeah. They can it can be redundant, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. So that's where we, it's a hole in the ordinance, like a loophole, basically, right. you know? And, and it's reasonable to do mm -hmm. if you're going to send out the letters and then if they, yeah. you know. For sure. Yeah. And it, and so we'll definitely be working. We're definitely working on that now. So okay. from the last council meeting okay. that we had. And then the last thing I, I, well, two more things. I want to thank the treasurer for overseeing the Parks and Rec Department. I see that it's under the, under construction right now. So when we talk about some of the positive things that we want to hear about the city of Inkster, that's, that is tremendous to the longevity of the city of Inkster. Uh, you know, once it gets redone, uh, it's going to be a beautiful site. It's going to be a jewel to the city. So I want to thank the treasurer for overseeing the project and helping out with that project. I popped up on him on Saturday just to see what, you know, what was going on and he was there. Uh, doing this thing. So I, I appreciate that, Mr. Treasurer. And also, Mr. Chair, uh, I do want to thank your office and you as well for the community buyback program. It was, I know you ain't going to say anything. I know, I know, I know. I but it. I do want to say that because it is to be commended that, you know, the community came out to be interested in buying property. And in buying the property, it creates stabilization. I can go on and on, but I just want to say that's a good job. Thank you. And keep up the good work. Thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councilman Shaw. Councilwoman Wiley? Yes, sir. Um, first of all, I would like to ask for the building department re report reference outsourcing and in-house in -house versus outsources. I'm asking for that again. Uh, I'm asking that camera for the stores policy that was in our packet a week ago or so. Is that coming back to us? When you say the policy, uh, you annoying. had a whole bunch of things that you were asking for on you know, police department head, letterhead and it was about cameras and how they would operate with the different stores and things of that nature? Right, yeah. It's actually, so you're talking about the, the, the program that we're rolling out right now as it relates to the camera system throughout the whole community. Right. Not just the stores. Is yeah, it that'll coming, be coming back before. to us? Yes, that's because coming. Because I spoke with several businesses, and they said they weren't involved in the, uh, the putting together of that packet. Because some of them even, I even called the Chamber well, it's of a Commerce. City or, it's a city ordinance that you adopted. You were part of the councilmatic body that adopted that every business has to have a camera. But that, that ties still doesn't the include department. the fact that these people should be involved in it as far as what they were. Because I got some really good feedback from mm -hmm. some of these people who were saying things like the cameras should all be uniform. Mm -hmm. Because if they're just allowed to put up whatever camera they can afford, uh, this person even told me the camera that they chose breaks in the winter. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I'm just trying to find out how much input you had from the actual people who are being required to do this. Let, let me just step back again and just say that this ordinance was enacted. You were actually on the body that said that all businesses in the city have to have cameras. Now, you didn't do specifications. Now, if you want to go back and change the ordinance, that's something that the councilmatic body needs to do. Well, I think but they it's an need ordinance to do it. that when you go through the business license process that each business has to have a camera system that ties into the police department 
and then they have mm-hmm. to have so many cameras, but it doesn't speak to specifications. If that's something well, that you want to add. that's something then, that you all had in this because you were requiring access to these people's passwords and things of that nature. Ma'am, and I keep get, saying, I keep saying we, this is something that was already enacted that we're just okay, enforcing. Whomever. The business license process. Needs to talk to the people actually being required to provide these things. We, we do. Before enacting them. Well, the Chamber of Commerce said they had not been advised. Mm. And they can and, come before um, us and speak to that. That's like I said, and some businesses I spoke to were unaware of it. I'm sorry, so let me recognize Officer Lee. Can I recognize Officer Lee? Well, she raised her hand. Go ahead, Officer Lee. I'm going to tell you that Sergeant Wall with Ordinance Enforcement, she actually drafted a letter that I was the other day to both all the businesses informing them of the ordinance that's already in place and put into place, what the requirements are, and then as a result of the um, renewal of their business license, I'm actually going to be one of the people that goes out to approve your specifications. It's not a whole lot of requirements. It just has to be a camera with 1080p. Well, from what I gleaned from the paperwork that you all had put out, there are a lot of stipulations in there that seem to me to be an invasion of privacy. I mean, I don't care if it is the police. I wouldn't want them with my passwords, you know, that type of thing. So it's hmm. something you may want to look I don't at. Think, I don't think that that's the case, but we will be doing a presentation from okay, that's good. the administration, the police department, as it relates to what we're doing okay. for the entire city. Now, I'm looking for a policy update. Mm-hmm. We always talk about these different policies, like there was a robocall policy. haven't heard anything about it. I think it Councilman Chisholm sent that out to the entire body. Yeah, but it's just, I mean, that was months ago. Okay. And nothing has happened since then with okay. it. Okay. So it has to, doesn't um, have to come to the body as a request to be able to put on the agenda to do that? I have no idea how you do it. I just knew that they were asking for input from mm-hmm. other council members. Once we got the input, David Jones would then uh, compile or whatever mm-hmm. and, and shoot it back out to us for some sort of okay. Okay. Or, or if I'm wrong, please address that. Yeah. Yes, I can address that, Mr. Mayor. Um, so I did send it out to everybody for input when we initially talked about it. Attorney Jones did respond with his input back to us. It was only like, I think, maybe two minor changes. But since then, um, there was no further movement on it. So if I need to, I'll submit a request for council action. But other than that, exactly. nobody else said anything. So, okay, yeah, I and mean, that's how it should come. So you should, if you give it to the city clerk and do a request for council action. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anybody can put anything on an agenda that's part of this councilmatic body. You don't have to wait for the administration to do it. You just need to submit it to the city clerk with all the pertinent inf- information, and then we put it on the agenda. Okay. Uh, then there was the public participation policy. Okay. I don't know what happened with that. Okay. Public participation I did submit, policy. I did submit suggestions, mm-hmm. and... Uh, there was nothing that... Are we talking did. about the rules for council? No, no. That's the third policy I'm asking okay. about now. Okay. This was public participation okay. because there was some problem with how things were going. Mm-hmm. And the, they said that we can't deny people the right to speak, but we can um, frame their, you know... Right. So... We'll make sure that we put that. I know David did look into that and there was some other stuff as it relates to us doing this hybrid situation right now. Mm-hmm. So we'll make sure that we bring that before your next council meeting. Okay, and uh, the council. All right, and the other thing is the expenditures. I went through the um, the check register mm-hmm. for uh, the last month, and there are quite a few expenditures on here that aren't you know explained or anything. Like there's a bunch of money for um, community image builders professional services mm-hmm. and I'd be interested I can send you this yes please, please. Okay. I would hope so and there were um, another one was for our governmental cons- consultant mm-hmm. now I know he was sick for a long time and then he passed away who has been our uh, lobbyist mm-hmm. since that time well, they're a firm so yeah I Gary, understand Gary but Owen we were is... always assigned yeah. Ken Cole so yeah, Gary have Owen. we been assigned someone yes yes who? his name is Gary Owen and he's been with Gary? us, Gary Owen. Okay. And and we'll have him come before the body and present. Yeah, that'll be good because we used to, uh, Gary Owen, we used to get that. Okay. Now, the next thing is um, I came to City Hall to pay a bill the other day. 
And as I was standing in the lobby, I was watching uh, one of the uh, tellers there interact with the, uh, the public. And I want to say, her, na her last name is Foster. And I want to say I was extremely impressed by the way she conducted herself with people. Because anybody knows that coming to City Hall, you either paying a bill or making a complaint or doing something that's, you know, not in your wheelhouse. So the way she put people at her ease, the way at their ease, the way she talked to them, the way she, you know, just did, I was truly impressed. And I told her so when I did get to the window, how impressed I was with how she interacted with the other people. And I just wanted to make this administration aware that, People like that are necessary because working with the public is not easy. I don't envy anybody that has to do it. But she did it with such a plum. It was, you know, so Foster's the last name. Y'all need to write her something more. Yeah, she's one of my direct hires, so I know exactly who she is. Thank you. Yes, I'll definitely so pass she out was on really the treasure city right there, too. And so lastly, mm -hmm. the truth hurts. Mm -hmm. Okay? When you throw a rock into a pack of dogs, the only one that yelps is the one that got hit, okay? And I may not agree with what you say, but I will depend, defend to the death your right to say it. Well, last week, I must have hurt quite a few people with the truth, hit a pass a load of critters with one rock, and convinced one person or two that they had the right to deprive me of my constitutional right of speech. <coughs> Now, uh, this request or this information was sent to every member on council but me and the clerk, I believe, got a copy, but I didn't. So um, I must have also uncovered a cockroach who shuns the light and shares the characteristics with a craven power. Through the many times I have challenged administrations in Inkster, and I have challenged quite a few. I have always had the courage of my convictions to face them. Never have I engaged in the surreptitious, furtive, deep backstabbing approach chosen by some people. This letter accused me of things that never happened, advised that the impact of interaction with me was the reason they left the city's employ. I don't even remember this person or ever interacting with her, nor do I remember their employment with the city, nor do I have the clout to force any sane person to quit their job. So I must conclude that this person is also a delusional liar. Of any who objected to my advisory, none were able to say that my information was untrue or present documents to prove the accusation untrue. You know, it breaks my heart that we are constantly choosing emotion over logic, form over fact, personality over performance. I can't tell you how many times a uh, deficit in a person's ability has been mentioned, and the response is, but I like him or her. Please tell me what that has to do with the performance in question. Say you have a surgeon that you absolutely adore, but he has never saved a patient and a surgeon who you can't stand, but he has a 99% success rate. Who do you let operate on you, your child or your mother? Please don't let your affection for a person blind you to their capabilities or character. And don't let your dislike for a person blind you to the truth. Hear the truth even if it comes out of an awful mouth. Patrick Gloomily may be a great person to hang out with, or play a hand of cards with, or shoot the breeze with. I just don't believe he's mere material. And right. that's my right statement. Right that's it? Yep. All right, good. Council the way. Um, Mayor, um, I don't know how you want to handle this, but I know you've been getting together for the parade, but I would like for you to address the ministry mm -hmm. on, the, on the third Monday. Third Monday? Yeah, uh, I think Sister Velma, Velma is in the audience. So you, you do the you do the agenda, right? 
You said on the third Monday of what is that? April or March? March, because because the parade is in what, so the twenty the twenty eighth. Yeah. Okay. What you what so, time? So, um, uh, one o'clock. All right. Where at? Okay. I think they still meeting on Zoom. Okay. Um, I, I'll have I have the secretary or the president to send you the Zoom and, and, and everything. Okay. Well, I was trying to get really if you had be proactive about getting a letter that even though the ones that didn't come to that to that ministry line that we can just deliver a letter from you to the, all the churches. Okay. Okay. And ask them to be at that meeting. Well, no, I'm asking them. To participate oh, yeah. in the parade. We're already doing that already. Okay, well, I don't know how long you're going to take to do that, but it needs to be done. I think it's actually done. Yeah, it's, it's done. So it's going out to the churches like it should be going out now. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So I think you need to address them. I will. I'll meeting. still come and address them at that meeting. You say you want to do that anyway, so I have it. Thank you. All right. Okay. Anything else? No, I just wanted to, um, you know, everything, everything is, is, uh, we're reaching out, okay, so, uh, I want to know about these cameras, okay, you're saying that, that this, this body voted for all businesses that they have cameras, I, I, maybe I'm confused about that. You were part of that, that was uh, the previous administration. Okay, so what I'm hearing, the previous administration is indicating that we're forcing all businesses next year to, uh, to have cameras at their have cameras to the police department? Correct. And not forcing this is part of the ordinance. Part of you say you're business. not forcing them? It's a part of doing business in the city. I can be better because I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't, I'm not understanding. It's, it's a part of the business license process that each Facility. What I'm saying is, kept that the question account. that I asked was, are we forcing the businesses of Inkster to go through the camera system with the police department? Correct, yes. And not forcing, but it's part of the ordinance. It's part of the requirement to do business in Inkster. Okay, well, you have a choice to do business in America. So you have a choice to follow the rules and what it is. If you don't, then it's, you know, it's part of the ordinance, which is the law in the city. And so there's a fee that they would have to pay through the Polish department? Not at this point. We're working on that right now. Go ahead, please. I think there might be some confusion. The ordinance, and I could be mistaken. I'm, I'm new into the process myself, but the ordinance just states that the cameras have to, that the businesses have to have cameras. They're not like live streamed to the department or anything like that. That's not, that's then not the process. You need to read the policy. We got it. I did. I read the ordinance the other, the other day. day. It, it just says that they have to have a camera. No, I still have the copy we had, so maybe well, I'll... Let's not get out of order, Councilwoman. I'm Robert. sorry, sir. I apologize. I, 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 I can ask her the question that I need then, because I'm, I'm just trying to figure out the, the, the ramifications of what we send to a business person in here. But you know, we do have small businesses and stuff like that in the community, and, and, and in this ordinance, what it's actually saying. Right. I can read the ordinance if you'd like. It's not very long. I'll get. I, I'll get. We'll have a present. We'll have a presentation for the whole body. In front well, of the I, I, because I, you know, I'm just, I'm just wondering before we go out there, you know, right. put that on the people. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, sir? No, I um, have no more. Um, just want to say that I'm willing to work with this council. There's some issues that we have, and we really need. To unify ourselves and talk about it and, and get done. You know, all of the, I agree with the people that came forward that, that, that indicated that we, we shouldn't batter each other. You know, we should be able to work with each other. You see what I'm saying? And even though a lot of people, you might be there and you might not like the mayor, but he's human and he, he got feelings too. And to sit up and just say anything about him and just throw, you know, I, I, I've been watching it ever since I've been sitting here. Okay. Um, he's trying his best to do everything he can do to, to, to improve this city. Okay. Now, there's a lot of issues that, 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 that if we're going to start 
you know, banging and slamming at people that we can bring out. Okay, but we don't we don't need to go to war with each other. We need each other. We need we we need to start looking at our areas and things. Yeah, when I got when I jump on the mayor, what do I jump on you at? In my office. That's right. Because the simple fact is, you know, we all in this together. Okay, I'm 71 years old, and I am sick and tired of angst. Okay, believe me, and I'm a council person sitting here trying to make a difference. And the reason why I'm so sick and tired of it is because we put people here that want to talk about each other, downgrade each other, when we should be coming together trying to bring people in this community to do things. Okay, so what I'm saying is I would hope that this council and the mayor, I ain't going to leave them out, that we come together, okay, but we can start saying we should overcome in this city and make it what it should be. You know, when people come to us and stuff that, you know, because a certain person say something, we don't want to hear what they got to say. And that's wrong. Because that same person can save your life. Well, I, I just wanted to say that tonight, Mr. Mayor. You know, I, uh, and, and I got one place that when you get ready to make your decisions on, uh, everybody make decisions, the police department making decisions on the speed bumps, please put one over there by, you know, who houses. <laughs> <laughs> God bless y'all. I, I just wanted to bring that and, and say that tonight. Uh, I think we're doing a great job in this city. I think we need to come together, put our hash out all of the disagreements, and move forward. You might not like me, but I don't care. You might talk about me. I don't care. Because the more you talk about me, the less I'm going to be. And you need, we all need to take that attitude. One for another. We ain't, everybody sitting here. I'm not no billionaire, so therefore we got to still try to work with each other in peace and harmony. I just like, you know, that's all I got to say, Mr. Mayor. I'm tired. All right. <laughs> Councilwoman Washington. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you to D, uh, DPS, um, uh, Director Bivens. Um, on Central Street, we had a, um, a tree trunk that was having pest issues and sitting there for a while, so thank you. He just let me know that he moved it today, so I just want to say thank you to you for that. Um, also, I was able to also attend the buyback event um, that Mayor Patrick Wimby put on, and it was a really great event. Um, they had um, two buses that actually did a tour. Um, got a lot of great feedback, a lot of realtors that are that live in the community was able to attend and they really liked it. Um, was able to um, get information that was needed to be able to be involved with buying um, land or being a part of the NSP program. So I want to say thank you for um, putting that on for our residents. Um, also, I will um, give two resources, one for homeowners um, and the second one for <coughs> rents. Um, the first one is my half. I gave the same uh, presentation last week, but I'm going to give it every week because for those people that need the resources, I don't want you to miss it. So to get help and avoid foreclosure, there is a program called MyCap. And if you're behind your 2019, 2022, 2020, or 2021 property taxes, you can apply for these uh, resources. Um, the website is myhaf, M-I-H-A-F, dot Michigan, dot gov, or you can call phone number 313-224-5990. And that is through Wayne County Treasurer Department. The second resource is for emergency rental assistance. That is E-R, I, uh, no. E-R-A, and that is open to residents of Wayne County, and that helps with um, housing issues for emergency rental assistance for those who are at risk of losing their home. Um, they are paying for rental arrears up to 12 months and future rent up to three months, relocation assistance, and assistance for utilities. That includes electricity, home heat and water, sewer, or internet stipends. That phone number is, you can call 833-742-1513 or go on a website, on the Wayne County website and go under rental assistance. 
Um, also, I would like to uh, kind of address the same issue or um, kind of go off what um, Councilman Williams stated. I think it's not how you, it's not what you say sometimes, it's how you say it. Um, and I think, you know, all of us, you know, we all have different opinions. I respect everybody up here. I don't always agree with everybody up here, but I show respect to everyone up here. And I think the one thing is that if we have issues, maybe it's something that we need to do is try to go through some trainings or something like that. Because if you go to different communities and I have the pleasure with working with um, Senator Betty Jean Alexander's office. So I go to different different city council meetings all the time. Garden City, uh, Detroit, <coughs> Dearborn Heights, um, different communities. And I never really see it like this, where everybody's kind of bickering back and forth. Um, so, I mean, other communities are looking at us. When you go up to Lansing, you hear about what's going on in the city council meeting. It's kind of embarrassing. To be honest. Um, so, I, I mean, even if we do have to go through some trainings, maybe we can all try to do some team type building something for us to try to work together and maybe try to sort out some differences that we have in regards to trying to work together because we have another <coughs> year and a half to serve and we have to get along, you know, unfortunately, just like going to work. We probably don't like who you work for or who you work with, but you got to go to work and you got to get along with everybody there to actually have a common goal. So the common goal is to make sure that Insta residents are being served and that we're doing our job. And that's what we, that is kind of the main goal and not to really bicker with each other, you know, because like I said, other communities are looking at us and, you know, they definitely make it known that they're looking. So I think we just have to really make sure that we understand that we need to respect each other. We may not get, a, we may not agree, but just respect is the one key that I would just put out there. So that's just that's the end of my report. All right, thank you, Councilman Washington. Your approach now. Hi, thank you. Um, you sent an email out to us in regards to the budget calendar deadlines. Mm -hmm. Um, April. 21st through May 1st is a study session for council. Mm -hmm. So maybe council should start uh, thinking about what dates that you want to have uh, a, a meeting for the budget. Now, will we have budget books by before the end? It's all in the binder. I mean, it's all in that layout. It shows you when the okay. binders and budget books are going to happen. Okay. We have been over this situation a couple of years now. <coughs> Okay. That's why you got that. No, I mean, time. I mean, I know what we're supposed to have. I'm just saying uh, we didn't have a budget book last year until after, you, after you we approved. It, you, okay, yeah, you have it this year. Cause also, too, be uh, our audit. Mm -hmm. When are we going to get our books on our audits? Because it's been a while. We, I mean, it's been overdue. Not so, our audit was supposed to be originally done when before November. December. Okay, so what is? Can you tell me what's the hold up now? Because this just seems like it's getting later and later and later. Yeah, well, they had, they just got information back from the actuaries, which was needed. Uh, there was some some information in twenty that needed to be gathered. Got that done. Then we had to get twenty one. Got that done. So now it's just some loose ends that plant the land and the auditors. So we've got everything over to the auditors. Okay. So now the auditors, we had a meeting with them last week, and they indicated that they're going to need some more time to actually put it together and finish it up. But in, in terms of our end, we're completely done. Okay. So uh, as the re as the state was required, did we get an extension on that? Because yeah, we, I'm, I'm in touch with um, Eric okay. um, at Treasury, and he knows about our situation. He understands it. You know that we have still need some time to finish up. Okay. Um. Thank you, and we will get binders, correct? Of course. Yeah. Okay. Now I know we did have um. Last year we um. Approved for city city employees to get city vehicles. Now I know I've seen some have all of. <coughs> and I know due to the shortage of uh, chips, have everybody received their vehicles mm -hmm. from? Not as of yet. Not as yet. No. 
Okay, so I so what's we the whole huh? the manufacturer? It's not us. It's the man. So okay, so okay. It's the world. Like I mean, I understand that, but I'm just saying did I mean have everybody? We're just waiting to receive. No, okay, no. so how many we need to receive? Uh, what is it that we're missing, Mr. Bibbs? Do you have a number for that, or do we need to get it back to? I'll get it back to you. Okay. okay, okay, all right, all right, and um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. I just want to just say thank you to all of my staff members. I mean, you guys are excellent just across the board. Um, you know, I know that uh, last meeting there was some things said as it relates to, you know, people exiting and coming. However, um, when I first took office, you know, people said to me, man, get rid of everybody. You know, that wouldn't have made any sense. And now that we're moving forward, now understanding that we've been in COVID, um, for the last 27 months that I've been in office, it's been 24 of those months that we've been in COVID. Um, we're working diligently and hard to make sure that we give as much as we possibly can in excellence and effort to make sure that our community continues to move forward. When we say that we lost everybody in the administration, I think it does a, a disservice to those people like Mr. Bivis who have served over 20 years with us um, here in the city of Inkster. Um, you know, we have a lot of great people that are that are here that continues to work. And it is this body and the behavior of this body that discourages people from wanting to work here and to uh, actually live and do business in the city. It's just, just a frank statement. Now, as we get off into, you know, what the city's doing and what we have been doing, we will be giving our state of the city address virtually. It will happen on uh, March 22nd, I mean, on March 26th. Um, I'll make sure that all of you get all that information. It'll go out in a flyer, um, a hard copy flyer, also to a flyer that'll go out digitally. Um, we, we've we done a lot and we're doing a lot. I mean, Councilman, Councilman Chisholm just spoke about, the, I mean, I'm sorry, Councilman Shaw just spoke about the, uh, the red complex. We received $800,000 from uh, Community Development Block Grant to renovate the recreation complex. And then the work is well on its way. And it'll be done, I believe it's June. The work will be done. And we're looking at another 2.5 million uh, from the federal government to extend out the senior center. We have a lot of things that we've done within this community through, through COVID. And it's tough when you, you're trying to work with people and they just don't want to work with you because they just don't like you. And it's them. And they may not like themselves, but however, I'm here to serve. I love this community. Um, I think probably, <laughs> I think I could probably say this. Um, Outside of Jerome, I've been in the city, working in the city, and a part of the city, probably longer than anybody out here outside of Councilman Williams, in some type of capacity, working with the city, whether it was with the schools or this administration or on this council. So I'm here to lead and here to serve. And if I'm not right, I get it. Call me to the table. I'm, accountability is what it is. I want to be responsible, but just don't continue to just beat me up and not pick up the phone when I call you or when I when I see you, don't even speak to me. Or I speak to you, you don't say hello. <coughs> so, at any rate, as we move our community forward, we have to move together. We have to. And those that don't want to move with us, we're continuing to build. So it's either you're going to be with us or you're against us at the end of the day. Because as I look at people in the city of Inkster, we're trying to work towards a better Inkster. If you're not willing to put in the work and then at the same time put in the effort behind the work and your words, then you are terrorists to our community. And that's on the record. Call for dismissal. So All in favor? Aye. Support. Aye. <laughs>